For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's not what you think. It may not even be what you believe. Not all people are going to heaven. Good wishes and wishing upon a star is not going to get you anyway. No matter what the television or the radio or media tells you. Because according to God's word, the Bible, Jesus said in his own words, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you can think, you can wish, you can go to church, you can be baptized, you can do good. But that's not what's going to get you to heaven. And the Bible calls for those that are already saved, go in all the world and preach the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scripture. Nowhere is it preached for Christians to unsaved people go in the world and invite them to church. That's not in the scripture. Go into the rivers and dunk them. Baptize them. That's not the ways of salvation. When the Philippian jailer said, Paul, what must I do to be saved? The answer was to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Going to church may make you good and you may be a good person. But when the Bible says there is none that doeth good. No, not one. So thinking, hey, look how good I am. That's not what God thinks. That's not what God's scriptures say. God has said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. You can sit in all the church pews and still go to hell. You can do whatever you want to do and end up with good people in hell. In order to get out of hell, your faith and belief 100% must be upon Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. God has set forth a standard. And the standard of God's righteousness is the Lord Jesus Christ and no other. It's to the glory of God of Jesus Christ and not what I can do or you can do. The great hymn found in him is not how great I am. It's how great thou art. And how great thou art is God through Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ is God. And God is Jesus Christ. Now you may be part of a religion that denies God and Jesus the deity and you're anti-scripture. You may go to a church where the priest takes everything on hand that's denying the scriptures. What saith the word? What saith the Bible? 
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Your eternal life depends upon it. Because in the Bible there is set forth an afterlife. In the pages of the King James Bible from Genesis to Revelation there is a heaven and there's a hell. There is no other. For the preaching of the gospel today, there is no other. And there's a true, terrible fact. The greatest and good people are in hell and go to hell. When you think about a place called hell, you think about the most terrible go there. And the most wonderful go there too. Those that do not go to hell are those who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone, not of works, at least any man boasts. It's not what you can do it's not what any other man can do but the man Christ Jesus. When you rely on your way, when you rely on another man or woman, you come short. And the only way to adapt the shortness to come to God is through the one that said, I am the way the truth and the light and no man cometh unto the Father but by me and that's Jesus your reverend your pastor your priest your rabbi your whatever guru cannot ever proclaim they are the way they are the truth and they are the light when they will die and become worm and maggot food. Now the Savior who is God died. And three days and three nights according to the scriptures. He was resurrected by the power of God never to decay. And that same Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father right now today. There is no pope, there is no preacher, there is no teacher, there is no philosopher, there is no education, there is nobody at the throne of God but Jesus Christ. It's that simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Acts 1631. And that's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm here to tell you that the fact is you will see a big bang. Not in the past but yet in the future. The Big Bang will destroy the entire earth and the heavens, according to the Apostle Peter. But when we look at creation, we look at God, the Creator, who made a male and made a female and gave them life. And them two, male and female, disobeyed the word of God and brought a thing called sin. And thanks to sin, the wages of sin is death. You're going to die because you are a sinner. It may be cancer. It may be natural causes, it may be a heart attack, it may be a stroke, it may be murder. 
But the basic realm of man to die is you are a sinner. Male or female, whatever color, race, or creed you are, you are a sinner, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that before you die, if you do not believe on the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world, people who reject Jesus Christ as their Savior go to hell. Whether they're good, whether they're wonderful, whether they're Baptist, whether they're charismatic, whether they're male, whether they're female, whether they're black, whether they're white, if they reject Jesus Christ, into hell they go for all eternity. There are wonderful Christ rejectors in hell. There are the most wicked, vile Christ rejectors in hell. And there are men and women today in prison for heinous crimes that have put their faith and trust in Jesus. And when they die, they'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Now your wonderful kindergarten teacher, your Sunday school teacher, so great, so perfect, so wonderful, without Jesus Christ will die and enter into the gates of hell for all eternity. Oh, they were so good, they were so wonderful, yet they rejected Jesus Christ, and that's vile, that's wicked, that's sin. You do not go to hell because of adultery. You do not go to hell because of murder. You go into hell because you rejected the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. And you need Jesus Christ because you have lied. You have dishonored your parents. You have sinned. You have stolen. You have wicked and vile thoughts. You have a committed adultery. Listen, you don't have to do in the Bible to have a sin. You can just think about it. And when you're thinking, I wish that man shut up, you are rejecting the word of God right now, and that's a sin. You don't have to walk up to me and punch me in the face. You don't have to walk up to me and tell me, shut up. Just think about it. And God will count it to you as sin. And much worse than that, when the Apostle of Paul killed Christians and put them in jail, Jesus Christ himself took it personally. And the Bible does speak about you mockers. And your mockery is sin. And you need the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You don't need a religion. Religion is a dime a dozen plus tax and shipping and handling. And it will ship your soul into hell. There are plenty of people in hell today thinking, how did I get here? I was not supposed to be here. And people like you have heard the gospel and have rejected the gospel. That is why you're going to enter into hell. Because you have rejected Jesus Christ. You have refused Jesus Christ. You have mocked Jesus Christ, and you will not listen to Jesus Christ. And you will go to church Sunday morning, you will be holy baloney, you will retain your sin, and you will die and go to hell. 
with your church attendance, with your denomination, with your baptism, with being a good person. Your church did not say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if your spiritual leader has spoken up and said, I am the way, do it my way, he's a liar. Because he's not Jesus. He is not God. That's an occult. When the Bible says, the Bible, not religion, the Bible, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And then you come to God with anything and everything else. When the vendor says, my produce is a dollar, and you come up to him with a quarter, you're not getting And when God says Jesus Christ and you come up with a false way, you come up with your own way, you're not going. God is not going to change his scriptures. God is not going to change his way because you are a Presbyterian. God is not going to change the way of salvation because you're American. God is not an equal opportunity allower into heaven. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be born again to get to heaven. You get all the lawyers you want. You get all the religions you want, and they will all go with you into hell. From the presence of God. And without Jesus Christ, the Bible will tell you, that God will tell you, that Jesus will tell you, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And if God doesn't know who you are, you're not going to heaven. And when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your name gets put into the Lamb's Book of Life. God knows who you are. It's written in blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, who is the blood of God, Acts 20:28. 20, You know, you cannot go into a baseball game with tickets for NASCAR. You cannot go into a NASCAR race with NBA tickets. You cannot go into heaven with religion. You cannot get to heaven by works. When God has set forth the way of his son, through the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The only ticket, if I can use that word reverently, the only ticket to heaven is by the blood of Jesus Christ. And let me forewarn you, as a preacher of the gospel, eating and drinking Jesus is a violation of the Bible. The eating of blood is forbidden before the law, during the law, and after the law. And the more you eat and drink Jesus, the more sins you lay on your account. You're not a Christian, you are a cannibal. 
What about the heathen in Africa? What about the heathens in Daytona Beach that eat and drink Jesus Christ? Well, John chapter 6 says, Whosoever eateth my body and drinketh my blood, and yet the flesh and blood profits it little. You haven't finished and read the whole chapter. You have made literal something that was to be made spiritual. You don't even have the understanding of the Jews that Jesus was speaking to. Because they were ready to stone him. The literal body of Jesus Christ right now is seated at the right hand of the Father. And when you open up that wafer that's Jesus, check the ingredients. Does it say Jesus Christ? It says modified starch, flour, leaven. May not say leaven, but. When the Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died upon that cross for our sins, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Not the pastor, not the church. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And Peter says, as a lamb without spot. Lamb of God. Amen. Without spot, a sinless, perfected, God manifested in the flesh, 100% man, 100% God. And you think that you're going to override Jesus Christ's gospel, that he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, that you think what you're going to do that's unscriptural, that God must let you into heaven. You're a holy baloney. You're filled with things that people in the FDA don't even know what it is. You need your spiritual and your soul hide to be whipped by a Bible-believing preacher. You need to be told the truth. Both preachers and evangelists today and the television ones and the radio ones will not tell you the truth. The truth is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's the truth. That's the only way to heaven. Uh, that's two dollars, baby. Two for three. Come on, are you in a healing ministry? You think healing the laying in hands? Go up to the two hospitals here in Daytona Beach. They will glad to let you in with your healing powers. To show how much of a fake you are. When the Apostle Paul told Timothy, drink a little wine for your stomach to ferment it. Oh! The same apostle said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The same apostle said, the wages of sin is death. The same apostle that preached that Jesus Christ arose after he died, according to the scriptures. The, the healing power of the apostle Paul and Peter, they're dead in the ground. They are absent from the body and present with the Lord. The true healing, the true life is through Jesus Christ. God does not save by denomination. He saves by the precious blood of Jesus Christ and those that put their faith in God does not save by currency. I mean, if God were to save by money, what would he take? American money, yen, talents? 
I don't think that there's a booth in heaven that can exchange your American money for coal. But the range of salvation can't be bought. And yet God purchased those who have put their faith upon Jesus Christ by His precious sinless blood. And that blood ran through the veins of Jesus Christ and was spilt out upon Calvary's cross. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. If you want sin removal, sin removal is not going to be by works. Sin removal can't be by what you can do. Sin removal is by what Jesus Christ has done. The finished work of Jesus Christ. It is how great thou art and not how great you are or I am. I sit here and preach the gospel as a saved sinner. I am not saved by what I have done. I am saved by what Jesus Christ has done. I come from the roads of Catholicism. The Mary, the eating of Jesus. The Mass. The Nun. And I was still going to hell. On April 25th, 1987, I met the Lord Jesus Christ. I put my faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I put all that religion under the blood and got saved. Are you Catholic? You know Catholics shed the blood of Bible believers? It's called the Inquisition. You know, the Catholic Church has shed the blood of Jewish people who are God's people. You know, the ways of Muslim is to kill infidels. But when you look at Jesus Christ, he spilt his own blood, God's blood, and never asked one Christian at all to spill any blood for salvation. Jesus Christ says, go in the world and preach the gospel. That's it. Don't you go force them. Don't you go make them. I. It is said, I have planted the Paul's water, but God gave the increase. The salvation of God through the Bible is not the shedding of man's sin and blood. It is the shedding of the blood of the sinless blood who was never a sinner, Jesus Christ. It's not what you can do, it's what Jesus Christ has already done upon Calvary. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I hate to have to kick religion and promote Jesus, but religion is not it. We talk with people all the time. Well, I'm good, preacher. Well, the Bible says there is none that is good. Sinner. One sin makes you a sinner. Everybody have to the guys. And if you die in that one sin without the Savior, You will go to hell because you rejected Jesus Christ who can wash you of your sin. And you were born into sin. Because you're of Adam's race. And if you think you are a monkey's uncle, you have been lied to, you have deceived the lie, and you are of Adam and you're still a sinner.
Just because you change the, the change the truth of God to a lie does not get you out of hell free car. It makes you a greater sinner. Because denying God as creator is a sin. Your monkey's uncle has made you more of a sinner. Because not only have you denied Jesus Christ, but you denied the creator God. Salvation of God is pure and it's free. And the access is through Jesus Christ at Calvary's cross. Hello, man. How about you? Where mercy is great and free. Where salvation is ready and waiting. Come and drink of the living water. No, still I have a lot of God, let me not give it. Feast on the Lord Jesus Christ and the bread. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. The Bible does not say believe in anything else. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the last of the sweet candy corn, guys. This is the sweet candy corn, guys. You can have religion, but religion is not going to save you. Well, I go to church. And what if your church door is closed tomorrow? Hey, what about going to another country where, where the church doors were blown up? What are you going to do for salvation then when your church has been blown up? What are you going to do if your pastor dies or your priest? Where is your salvation by Jesus Christ? Listen, churches are being closed all across England and all across this world. And that's your salvation. You got trouble. God, my church can save me. God, my church is locked. I can't get in. That's right. You won't get in, my church. What if your river dried up? I've been saved by water. Salt water, fresh water, tap water, spring water. What kind of water? How about the one God, the one Jesus Christ, the one means of salvation? How about that? How about that? Everybody coming up, guys. If your religion can die, if your religion can go away and not come back, like Jesus Christ died and came back and is living, you have a dead religion. Jesus Christ died according to the scripture. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scripture. You know the churches that Paul wrote to, seven of them? The churches that John addressed in the book of Revelation, okay. those churches are closed and gone. I'm glad they weren't the ways of salvation. Are you going to trust your church? with salvation, and you can't even trust the men of your church with the children? Really? My Jesus Christ can be trusted with anybody and everyone. And the power of the cross and the power of the gospel 
is that it's able to save your soul. It is able to get you to heaven. It will get you eternal life. He that has the Son has everlasting life. Not only is salvation just wonderful, I get to go to heaven. The Bible says you get a brand new body. That will never sin, never break down. Every tear shall be wiped away. No more sorrow, no more pain. By your faith in Jesus Christ, able to wash away your sins. God has the ultimate health care program. The benefits, the premiums have been paid by Jesus Christ. You want to talk about life insurance? Oh, the greatest life insurance policy through Jesus Christ. And you get paid the benefits when you die. A new body, a new life, eternal life, no more sorrow, no more pain, and you don't pay for nothing. Christ paid for it for you. The life insurance of man, it pays your family when you die. The life insurance of Jesus, it pays you when you die, and you don't even die because you're absent from the body and present with the Lord. You will not see the Pope that you went to go see in hell. It's too dark. You will not party with your friends in hell. It's too dark. Everybody loves my beautiful stuff. I am, guys. You're not going to party when the Bible describes hell as torment. So, I have one last thing. Thank you so much. It's the one that to know, it's the one to believe on, Jesus Christ. You may think you're going to heaven, but think twice, because without Jesus, you're not. Think all you want and be deceived. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be sure. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I'll never, I'll never depart from thee. I'll never leave thee. I'll never forsake thee. What can wash away your sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You're blinded. You are blind. And yet you can see. You can go through the valley of shallow death and fear no evil. You can get everlasting life. But you got to come to the one that suffered and died according to the scriptures. You got to come to the one that was buried. And you got to come to the one that arose from the dead three days and three nights according to the scriptures. You must come to God through Jesus Christ, the sinner that you are. There are no good sinners and there are no bad sinners. All have sinned and come short in the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. And you may have R.I.P. on your stone, but you may not be R.I.P. Or you could be roasting in place. In the flame. 
You can only rest in peace in Jesus. You roast in place in hell. Problem is, when you roast in hell, you'll never be done. They won't stick a fork in you to see you're done. You'll be always roasting. Roasting on an open fire. You were the nut that did not receive Christ. You know when I miss that deal, guys. To the glory and honor to Jesus Christ alone. To the great things He has done. God, look how great I am. Depart from me, worker of iniquity, I never knew you. God, I was in church every Sunday. Depart from me, worker of iniquity, I never knew you. God, I was a great pope. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. God, I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and by him alone am I saved, and there's nothing grander than the Lord Jesus Christ. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter now into his joy. It's not good that hell is filled with good. In torments. Being tormented. And tormenting. That's not good. But Jesus Christ, the blessed hope, the good one, is able and will, upon your faith and belief, take you out of hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The wages of sin is death. Death is coming and you do not know when it's coming. This could be the last morning you ever live. And if you die without Jesus Christ, you will spend all your eternity away from God, away from Jesus, in a place called hell. But if you're to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. You can have life eternal. Isn't it amazing? I could be so dead here once I start preaching. I, I bring this. It's a hot day in Florida, but it's hotter in hell. There's no AC in hell. No fans. No water. No relief. No one cares about you in hell, you don't want to do that. including your friends. I, I them up so they can to see how good it is. That's a religion. It won't get you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I give you the Come on, people, wake up before you wake up in hell's flames. Presbyterian, Catholic, Baptist will not get you into heaven. But by the blood and the testimony and the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a nice service dog, it's just easily distracted. It was a police training dog around here. That guy was very.
trying to get him to learn. Everybody he washed in the blood of Jesus. Or be ye swimming in a lake of fire. Imagine God telling you to go to hell. Everybody call me up, guys. No, I can't. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, ma'am. But imagine God telling you to go to hell. Imagine God telling you to go jump, jump into the lake of fire that burneth forever. Everybody come me up, guys. You want to talk about hopeless. When God will tell you to go to hell, that's hopeless. When the Bible says in the book of Titus, Jesus is the blessed hope. This is the last weekend, guys. Beautiful sweet candy corn.